Dr. Jennifer Gardy believes that being a better communicator makes her a better scientist. Dubbed by the Globe and Mail as the new Suzuki, she's best known as the energetic and dynamic guest host of CBC's The Nature of Things and Discovery Channel's Daily Planet. Jennifer's unique passion for science and performance started as a child. She was often found both dissecting fish heads with a butter knife and reciting monologues from her favorite TV shows during her family dinners. A major influence for the 16-year-old Jennifer was the 1995 movie Outbreak, starring Dustin Hoffman. The film sparked her fascination with germs and the idea of studying cooties when she grew up. Well, nowadays, she is studying cooties. As head of the BC Centre of Disease Control's Genome Research Laboratory, Jennifer has developed genomic epidemiology, a new scientific field to better understand how infectious diseases spread. When she's not examining bacteria and germs, Jennifer is acting as a live guinea pig in myth or science for the nature of things. She's participated in all kinds of myth-busting experiments like testing whether alcohol warms you up on a cold day or feeding herself to mosquitoes to see if they really do prefer women. Whether she's on or off camera, Jennifer is committed to research and education. Jennifer's intellect, energy, and devotion to science have catapulted her to rock star status in science communication and media. Her contributions were recognized in 2014 through the YWCA Women of Distinction Award for Science, Technology, and Research. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jennifer Gardy to the stage. Way to raid the Instagram collection there, video makers. That was fantastic. I'm glad you didn't dig up the clip of me on Nature Things in my bikini on national television, though. Something we don't need to see that is not an inspiring story for this evening. So as you saw in the video, I really have two jobs. I do science and I talk about science on television. And each one of those is incredibly interesting, but I don't think, you know, independently, they're particularly remarkable. And, you know, tonight is supposed to be about inspirational stories. And I could tell you the story of how I got to where I am in my science career. I could tell you the story of how I got to where I am in the media side of things, but they're not that inspirational. Nobody's going to get misty-eyed over them. You know, wind beneath my wings isn't going to start playing. Nobody's going to jump out of this scene. Oh, I have revelation. I must go out and sequence genomes and understand outbreaks of disease. So really, the truth is, you know, as you saw in the video, I saw outbreak when I was a teenager, and I thought, I want to study the science of infectious diseases. And this is not good inspirational advice. You know, choosing your vocation based on a Dustin Hoffman movie. <laughs> Don't, don't do that. Don't be like me. And the communication stuff, you know, if you ask anybody in my family, especially my long-suffering husband, he will tell you that I just talk and talk and don't stop talking. And science television was really a way to kind of turn that into a career. So independently, the stories aren't that exciting. But what I think is kind of neat is that I've managed to roll them together into one very sort of disparate, unique, strange career. And while this do path, the science and science communication, while it might be unique now, I really think that the way we work is changing. You know, people are no longer settling into one career. In any job that you have, you might be wearing multiple hats. They require multiple skill sets. Uh, you're increasingly sort of blurring that line between what's your work life and what's your personal life. And people are doing this willingly and happily because they want a career that's meaningful to them. So I think when we look at our next generation of SFU alumni, we're going to see people that are combining what might be totally disparate passions into these new, unique careers. And paths like mine that you saw in the video are going to start to become the norm rather than the exception. And when I look at all of the universities out there, I think SFU is really ideally positioned to create this next generation. Because if you look at our community, we're based on the core value of interdisciplinarity. And inter, yeah, yay, yes. 
build bridges. Interdisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity though, you know, it's not, it's not a thing that just happens. You, know, you don't build a building, label it, you know, Center for Interdisciplinary Studies. It really, you know, takes, it takes people. Interdisciplinarity comes from interaction. So I got my start in the media writing for SFU News about 10 years ago, uh, writing these freelance pieces. And the, the very, very first thing I ever wrote for them was an essay on what does it take to succeed in university? What types of people thrive? And I, admittedly, the first bit of advice I gave was that the person that can seek out free food on the campus is ideally positioned to succeed. You know, you're a student. You don't know where your next meal is going to come from and, and when it's going to be. But after that, I pointed out two C's that I thought were particularly important, and they really hold true to this day, and that's creativity and communication. And I think that's where interdisciplinarity is born. You know, when we encourage creativity, when we say things like, you know, hey, biology class, I want you to explain cell division for your assignment, but do it in a way that means something to you. Do it in a way that reflects your interests outside of the classroom. You know, you're a musician, write a song about it. You're a painter, paint something. You're a maker, build something. When we do that, that's how we create this cohort of interdisciplinarians, people that stand out from the pack, people that aren't afraid to combine their passions into one unique new career. And of course, communication is critical to that too. You have to share what you're doing with the world. And if I look back in that article, uh, I said, this is a direct quote, one of these days I'll think of a third C. Uh, and I did, if I look back, it was 11 years ago that I wrote that. If I think about what that third C is and how it's played out in my career, it's networking, <laughs> which I appreciate does not actually start with a C. Uh, <laughs> I did get a PhD from SFU, graduated top of the class, uh, I know my alphabet, and let's just say instead, you know, let's use the word collaboration. Uh, like I said, interdisciplinarity is born out of interaction. When we get people together, when we get them talking to each other, amazing things happen. So when the organizers were putting this event together, they said, uh, you think about what you could say if you were given the piece of advice, you know, or if, if not you, who, and if not now, when? What would you like to inspire people to do? So what I would like to challenge you to do is to be that group of people that goes out and helps to create that interdisciplinary future for our university, for our community, for our society. If you're a student now, if you're a trainee, if you're a recent alumnus, don't be afraid to be creative, to get a bit weird, to kind of mix things up and put disciplines together that have never been squished together before. If you're a microbiologist who wants to host television, do it. If you're you know, an architect who wants to design concert halls because you're a concert violinist or a bagpipe do it. If you're an accountant who really likes cats, you know, create the world's first accountancy firm that does tax returns for cats that have inherited a bunch of money from their wealthy owner. Like, the, the, there is a place for you in the world. I'm sure that's a real problem, too. I mean, yeah. Ask the Prime Minister, it's probably having a lot of impact on our economy. Just, just do it, do it, go out there and create. And if you're somebody that's further down the path, if you're already a leader in the university, if you're a leader in your community, be that mentor, be the connector, encourage interdisciplinary thinking in your trainees, in the people that are around you, help them make connections, advocate on their behalf, communicate for them, create places where you know, things can get wacky and people can do interesting things stuff. Because I really believe that if we take creativity, if we take communication, if we take collaboration and we make them core values for our university, for our community, for society, completely amazing things will happen and, you know, cats will get their tax returns done <laughs> and when we'll all be better for it. So thanks a million. Thanks to my amazing, incredible, supportive family who are here in the front row. Thanks to my fantastic SFU mentors, especially Fiona Brink my PhD supervisor, and Mark Winston, who really helped me uh, get on the path to science communication. And thank you to everyone, um, because when you look at, like I said, where interdisciplinarity comes from, it's every conversation. Every conversation counts. Every interaction matters. So go out there, interconnect, and as public health, I should remind you all, just wash your hands, too, <laughs> before you go network with everybody. Thank you very much.